In all the frameworks going to hear about this concept of passing data from parent to child component described is data flowing top to bottom, but in Svelte you can also revert that flow using bindings, event forwarding and context API. But you don't need to know this right now, because as we learned with slots previously, we can come to the conclusion that a lot of these APIs are more tailored to library creators than offers. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't use them, it's just that you shouldn't actively seek and worry about when to use each. When a problem arises, you can reach out for the necessary solution. However, one feature you're going to use all the time is the Svelte store, which is Svelte answer to global state management. You will reach for a store if you have information that is required by multiple unrelated components, such as the logged in user or theme. So this doesn't really have to be used for this use case, you can use the Svelte store for whatever you want. And it can also help to alleviate the problem that event forwarding and the context API solves for you, which are deeply nested components and having state, so you don't have to pass properties to each component. So the Svelte store is just an object you can subscribe to for updates when the store value changes and set and update values. You can have writable stores to read and write to, or readable stores if you don't want values to be set from the outside. And there's also derived stores if you want to use values from multiple stores. So before we look at an example, let's briefly look at the docs. And you can see here a description of the Svelte store. So it exports a function for creating readable, writable and derived stores. And you can also use a reactive value, which is awesome. And if we scroll, more we can see the implementation for a writable store that I'm going to show you and you can see how simple it is so we just import a writable we just define the value that we want for other components to listen to so count and we're going to export that count later and we can also have a count and use the subscribe method and when that's updated in one place it gets updated for every component so we're going to look at an even simpler way to do this so we can avoid this but you can learn more about stores later if you want from documentation and from tutorial which is excellent and i'm going to leave that up to you but let's look at a simple example of a store so in the Svelte repo we're going to create a stores.js and it's going to change the extension so you can just say import writable from Svelte store and we're going to export a message. That's a writable. We can say hello. And we can also copy this friendly wave emoji. So now we're going to go back to app.svelte and we're going to use the reactive message syntax to ask us the value. So that's going to subscribe and unsubscribe to the store automatically for us. So yeah, we can go here, say script. We can import the value from the store, source.js. We can also have an updater function, update store. And we can use a reactive value to update it using our friendly wave emoji. So we can say, we can get the reactive value also directly from the store if you use the dollar sign. So we can see it's hello. We still haven't updated it yet say button say click then we can say on click update store and this value should change so now imagine if you have multiple components that depend on this value they're all going to change and that's awesome so let's see if it works and sure it does I want to show you how you can create your own store by implementing the store contract. So unfortunately this example won't work in the Svelte REPL because we're going to use local storage. So I created a Svelte project inside code sandbox. And this is just app.svelte and the local storage JS file where we're going to be writing our store. And we can start by importing the writable from Svelte store. And then we're going to import a function local storage store with the key and the initial value. So we're going to say if there is no value, then we can set the item to the key that was passed. And we can stringify this value to what was passed. But if we already have a value, we can parse it. Say let's say JSON parse from local storage. We can get the item by the key. So this is the important part. We need to satisfy the Swell store contract. So for that, we need to return subscribe and update, and we can also specify a set method that's going to update the value. So we need subscribe, set and update from writable using our save value. So 
we can return subscribe set and update and let's say that set is a function that takes a value and it's going to update the local storage by setting the item the key then we're going to stringify the value and then we are going to return set value and that's it that's how simple it was to create a local storage store so let's see it in action so we can go back to the app.svelte example and we can use a script we can import our store local storage store from local storage store js and we're going to create a new value in our local storage it's going to be a message it's going to be a local storage store we're going to set the key it's going to be message and then it's going to say hello let us copy the wave emoji and then we're going to change it so we can see it works you're going to see that message instead of hello say bye and then we can log out the value and this should work and we can open the developer tools this might take a while <laughs> okay so we're in local storage and we can see here is our application we can see the message is right here so that's how you can create your own store contract. The Svelte store is incredibly powerful, so I encourage you to go through the Svelte tutorial and consult the documentation to learn more.